you know, all types of bruises and injuries and, you know, m you know, missing teeth and broken limbs and battle scars. And it was crazy, man. I was just saying to myself, man, ain't no way. Ain't no way in God's green earth I want to go up there because I just felt like if I went there, man, you know, I, I would end up being a casualty because some of the stuff that happened to them dudes up there, if they would have did it to me, man, I felt like I, I, I more than likely would have made them kill me, man. Before I let Banky Pound continue, I just wanted to express to you guys why I make videos about other channels. Well, it would be inconsiderate of me and the gospel would be incomplete if I did not reveal to you the life experiences of false prophets like Geno Jennings, Bishop Nathan Yale, Corey from Smart Christian Channel, and uh, Banky Pound. Although Banky Pound is not a false prophet, much respect to Banky Pound. I got a lot of respect for this brother. He spent 33 years in prison, okay, and he has a lot of experiences, a lot of life experiences that I myself have never had. If I just get up here and just explain to you guys my testimony and I don't give any other experiences and parallel that and how it relates to the scriptures, then I'm not giving you the complete picture. I'm not giving you the complete story of the broad gate. The, script, the scriptures say that examine one another to see that you are of the faith. Okay, and even those who are not of the faith we can still learn something from them. And as I stated, Banky Pound spent 33 years in prison. So a lot of those scriptures that speak about Edom's violence against Judah, the more and more I study this man's life, I see that he's a living witness to what God wrote in his word about how Edom would be violent against Judah and how they must pay the penalty for that. Nevertheless, I have two questions or two concerns that I want to address Mr. Banky Pound with. Uh, hopefully one day we get to break some bread and uh, speak about these things. Or maybe some of you who watch these videos can pass this along to him. Number one is that I, I respect your experience, Mr. Banky Pound. You're 33 years in prison. I believe that it was the grace of God that you were able to make it out of there intact. In in, in good health and still in your right mind. But I do want to say to you, hell is the place that no one wants to go and no one is making it out of that place. Those who go to that place do not come out. Okay. And hell is far worse than prison can ever be. In hell, there are far more people going to hell than there are that have went to prison and are currently in prison. Okay, I want to make that clear. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there are few who find it. So that's number one. I believe, Banky Pound, that Most High had grace on you so that one day you can not only share your experience of 33 years in prison, but you can explain, explain to them the grace that God had on you and come to the light. And there are those who the Lord may use you to reach out to who may never go to prison, but they're on their way to an eternal lake of fire. OK, and many of those people who you spoke about who oppressed you in the penal system, uh, the corrections officers and some of the wardens and the, the, the majors and so forth. You may be wondering in your mind why God doesn't punish them right away. Well, the scriptures say that because the sentence is not expedited immediately. Man is fully set in his heart to do wickedness. But unless we read the scriptures, <laughs> we don't see the forthcoming penalties against Edom, okay, which is the so-called white man because he runs the penal system. And that's my second thing that I'd like to address to you, Mr. Banky Pound. You talk about these experiences and yeah, they're very horrible things that have happened to people who you know and even you yourself personally. But what is the penalty for them doing that to you. Often people talk about karma and 
you know, what goes around and comes around. People just throw these words out loosely. Okay, but what does the scripture say that are coming upon as the scripture state in Deuteronomy chapter five, verse nine? He visits the iniquity of the father onto the children up to the third and fourth generations. Okay, and again, I've stated this time and time again man cannot outlive his sins. Okay, and that's where again I'm addressing you. Mr. Bill Weiss, and those of you who watch these videos, do not just be fence sitters, okay? I want you guys to be active, and I want you to get this video out to Bill Weiss and his audience, and Banky Pound and his audience, okay? Because I'm bringing the two together. These are two men with two completely different backgrounds and walks of life. And again, this is why I make videos about other channels, because if you take these two men life experience, uh, Bill Weiss is almost 70 years old. <laughs> Banky Pound is well past his mid 50s or he's about 56 years old now. OK, although I do have the word and I'm anointed with the word of God. OK, we have to we have to, as the scriptures say. Be harmless as a dove and wise as a serpent. He who is wise wins souls. That's what the word says. All right. There, you're not going to relate to everyone. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Okay. And this is what I've been trying to reach out to Bill Weiss about. Let's say if Bill Weiss wants to witness to Banky Pound and they never knew about each other's YouTube channel or anything, and he just walks up to him and says, you know what? Jesus loves you. Okay. Well, <laughs> just off of Bill Weiss' appearance alone, Banky Pound has a reference for men who look like that. And it, it, you may say, well, don't judge a book by its cover. People just throw that word, those, those phrases out loosely as well. There's a generational curse that comes upon people just off of their countenance alone. And I don't have time to get into that. I have to, I'll be here teaching forever just on that. Okay. There's scripture for that. That you can see a lot on a man's countenance off of the sound of his voice. How much folly is in his voice, uh, obviously off of his deeds, what he does for a living, how did he earn his money, what inheritance was passed down to him. OK, so now when this man is coming up to you saying Jesus loves you and he wants you to repent of your sins. Well, if this man has forefathers who passed down blood money throughout the generations, you see what I'm saying? That man may be offensive to this guy. Bill Weiss may be an offense to a banky pound. And I've heard many stories of that, of the so-called white people going into the ghettos with no check in their hand for reparations. No, no, nothing. Just coming to them talking about Jesus. The scriptures say, well, what is it good if you just go to a man and say, hey, it, 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 uh, uh, go, go be in peace. God bless you. And you don't minister to his need. You just witness the word of God in vain, <laughs> especially when the debt must be paid because man cannot outlive his sins. You see what I'm saying? You can't get past that. The sin has to be passed down. Even if Jesus loves you, that Jesus, Jesus paid the, the, the debt for our sins that our soul may be saved. But did man continue to die or not after Christ died on the cross? Yes or no? Of course he did. They won't about us. And they just threw people in there to give them a job, man. It ain't had nothing to do with the prisons and knew anything about penology or, you know, uh, rehabilitation or nothing like that, man. They just was, they just was thrown in there. And then they was just so racist, you know what I'm saying? They ain't even really, you know, you know, like uh, people uh, other than their own, you know what I'm saying? So what, what, what are you doing working here, you know? But it was what it was, man. And see, that's part of being locked up, man. You would get put in these positions that you would never think you would be in. You know, and now you in them. You know what I'm saying? And they was just straight cowards, man. And they was 
able to do what they wanted to do because they had the advantage, man. Like I say, you know, ain't no fun if the coward got the gun, man, you know. So everybody that they ever disliked, they, you know, they, they, all their racism, all of their, if they was ever encountered a, a different color person on the street and won't, you know, brave enough to stand up to them, all of this was at their disposal now. They can take all that out on you. <laughs> you is the fall guy. You is the bottom of the barrel. They say what they want, talk how they want, uh, treat you how they want, and ain't had to answer to nobody. And, and get paid for it. And get paid for it. So we look at Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 15. It says, the wicked must restore the pledge. Give back what he has stolen and walk in the statutes. You have to pay for the sins of your forefathers. So when I'm sitting here and I'm listening to Banky Pound talk about these abominable, inhumane things that were done to these prisoners, teeth being kicked out of their mouth, spat on and called the N-word and guards beating prisoners to death, okay, and saying that it was another inmate that did it. They canning gangs against one another. These are things that ju that, that's going to be brought up in the day of judgment. And then, then you have these people who wonder, man, this police officer got killed. And man, why did the, why did the man just shoot the police officer in the head? A lot of people are not. And again, I'm not being insensitive to death. No one is teaching how sin is imputed. You don't know what was in that man's bloodline to where his forefathers didn't repent and he didn't renounce the sins of his forefathers. You don't know if his one of his, you don't know if his great, great granddaddy raped one of the black slaves. You don't know if his great, great granddaddy was a pedophile. Okay. You don't know what he did. All right. And the sin was not passed down. It was not repented of. So it kept passing down throughout the generations. There, you, did you know that there are demons? There are demons who visit on behalf of the, the sins of the slave masters, uh, the grandchildren. They come to the grandchildren. And now these people are walking around with all of this wealth, okay, that they were born into. And then when they see a black person who uh, probably, you know, they, they may be afraid of for whatever reason. Okay. Did you know that that's a demon that's on them? That's a demon of fear that's on them. That's one of the many spirits that was passed down through their bloodline. How, and again, how are you going to witness to people with spirits like this on you? Okay. That's why Christ said, go sell everything you own and give it to the poor. That's how you relieve yourself of the accumulation of the sin debt. The books have to be balanced, okay? Sin is incredibly expensive, as I always say, okay? This so-called white man has been over the penal system, okay? He's profited off of the military-industrial complex, going into these third world countries, exploiting the poor, stealing their resources, setting up the uh, World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, charging them outstanding amounts of interest and debts. There are starving black children in these countries with their rib cage showing. You see what I'm saying? He's, he's initiated and institutionalized the prison industrial complex to where he knows there's going to be a lot of death from these men being housed in these cells, no women. No, no, they can't see their family. Yes, they may have committed crimes, but they're, they're there to profit off of them. Even if it means doing away with the death penalty, for the most part. <laughs> if they gave all the murderers the death penalty, there's no profit there. That just goes to show you how desperate and wicked these devils are. Okay, Bill Weiss, you never talk about these things. You a smart guy. OK, you need to repent, dude, because whenever I've heard you talk about the Semitic people, you keep lying, saying that those Jews who are in Israel are the real Jews and they are not. You have to answer to God for that. It's not just talking about heaven and hell. No, you got a long way before a person goes to hell. They spend a lot of life 
living before the final judgment of eternal hell. Okay. And it seemed like you just loop everybody in together. No, there are some who have more, a higher concentration of wickedness in their bloodlines, dude. Okay. And again, this is why I talk about other YouTube channels. The book of Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5 says, Edom and the rest of the nations gave his land to themselves as a possession. Okay. Remember, there are two nations. There's Jacob and Esau. The scriptures say that Esau shall live by the sword. He shall live in the fatness of the land, but everything he's going to get, he's going to conquer by the sword, by the, the shedding of innocent blood. Okay. The book of second Estrus says that Esau's the end of the world and Jacob's the beginning of that, that follow. Why? Because God is going to make Edom desolate because of his violence against Judah. I said it before, and I'll say it again in order for Edom. Okay. The Edomites, the so-called white people. All right. How do we know that there are white people? If you go into the book of Leviticus, it gives intricate details of the children of Israel. It says that it talks about the laws of leprosy. No one with bright spots on their skin, which is not saying white spots. It says bright spots because the children of Israel were dark skinned people. That's why it's saying that anyone with bright spots on their skin were considered unclean and they were not allowed, permitted to be in the camp. The book of Genesis chapter 25 says that Esau was red and hairy. Okay. So-called black people are not red and hairy. So in a nutshell, that is how you distinguish who are the Semitic people. That's one of the ways. Okay. By the, 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 the color of their skin. Okay. Another way, obviously, is the blessing. Two different nations, two different blessings. Okay. One will live by the sword and everything that he inherits will be by the sword. The generations that he passed down will be by the sword. He'll live in the fatness of the land. So-called black people don't live in the fatness of the land. For the most part, they live in the ghettos. That's where most of our people are populated. We understand. So why is this important? How does this relate to salvation? The experience, the different experiences of different people. Okay. Because if you're going to go ye into all the world, you're going to have to follow the commandments that Christ passed down. That way people take you more seriously, Bill Weiss. You can't just be going preaching to people who just look like you or people who don't look like you. You omit the truth to them by just not speaking about it and just going and talking about hell. Yes, we need to preach to people about hell, but there not everyone's sin is the same. All sin is not the same. Okay. Christ gave different instructions for people who are, he said, to whom much is given much is required. So th those who have riches, he said, go sell everything you own and give it to the poor. He was talking to Edom, the so-called white people, because they're living on blood money. Okay. They're, they've built prisons and used it to invest in Wall Street off of blood money. He who gains riches not by right shall be destroyed. That's what the scriptures state. King Solomon said, ruthless men retain riches. I just marvel at the story of Banky Pound. And if Banky Pound, you ever get a hold of this video, everything that I explained in this video, this is, this is the redemption of your life, of your 33 years that you suffered in prison. This is the recompense that will be uh, uh, dished out from the Most High against Edom, again, for her violence against Judah. Like the scriptures state, okay, you reap what you sow. Okay, so it's not just, well, you spent 33 years in prison. No, but God has a plan for you, brother. He has a plan for you. And that doesn't mean that our people goes away scot-free as well. No, Christ said, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Okay, but for the sake of this video, because I've been listening to Mr. Banky Pound for over a year now. The things that you do suffer, okay, 
it is wise of us to look in the scriptures and see what are the forthcoming judgments that are coming upon our oppressors and those of our oppressors and their descendants who have repented they need to know these scriptures as well so that they'll be effective witnesses for the sake of the kingdom because christ commanded us to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel you can't do that if you got fear in your bloodline if you got blood money that's been passed down in your bloodline and you have not obeyed the, the word of God, that go sell everything you own and give it to the poor. He said, uh, uh, woe to you who are rich, for you've received your consolation. Christ drew that line in the sand. Okay. You have to go up to people who don't look like you, Mr. Bill Weiss, and cut them twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 check. Then tell them, Jesus loves you. Don't sit up here like Mr. John MacArthur and just deny that repar reparations are old, okay? Because John MacArthur's on his way to the lake of fire for that because he doesn't repent it. <laughs> he don't think that he's done anything wrong, all right? And it's not even, people will say, well, I wasn't there when my forefathers did what they did. You don't have to be there. The sin of the forefathers passed down. That's how sin is imputed, okay? You've received reward from his evil deeds. Okay, that's why the scriptures talk about strong delusion. But anyway, I've made this video long enough. I want you guys to reach out to Banky Pound and Bill Weiss, two different men with different backgrounds and walks of life. And I want you to send them this video so that we can have some dialogue about real truth, unadulterated truth. All right. God bless.